I mean, there's two two routes to human happiness, I feel like. One is to go back to living as cavemen, which is what our brains evolved for. Mm-hmm. And the other is to go forward and basically adapt our environment and adapt our brains and find something that's not so so screwed up. Mm. And, I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to sound depressive. I'm, I'm generally no, happy. Yeah, it's like we're in a, 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 the adolescence of um, of uh, civilization at the moment. Something we're just like that. Yeah, getting I mean, I, I think I'm I'm a relatively happy person. But I mean, I think you know when, when Buddha said all existence is suffering, he he was overstating things, but he, he had some core insight there, which is the way the human brain is made. Mm-hmm living in in the society that we have created for ourselves most things that we do are wrapped up with some kind of stress tedium or unpleasantness and Mm -hmm. we take it for granted just like a prisoner takes for granted living in jail but i think it's possible to have much more rewarding ways of experiencing life and i think once we get there it will lead us to all kinds of places that we can't imagine now. I mean, mm. sometimes I, yeah, I think right. about, like, think about some cavemen sitting around in a cave debating the invention of language with a few grunts and groans, and they're like, well, why do we need this language thing? Like, we're, we're okay here. We have women, we have food, we have a cave. Mm. And then some guys are, are grunting and groaning and pointing around, suggesting that, well, yeah, but once we develop this language thing, a lot of stuff will become possible that we can't possibly foresee now. Yeah. And indeed, mm. when they invented language, how could they foresee Shakespeare or advanced mathematics, right? Or music. Or chat online, or mm. yeah, exactly, they couldn't. Mm. Similarly now, we can't foresee what AGI and brain-computer interfacing and nanotech are gonna bring. But just like the cavemen inventing language, mm. we can foresee it's going to bring something way beyond the little cave we live in right now. Do you think now. language and, and, came before art? Um, <laughs> I just suspect that some form of language came kind of in, in parallel with very simple art and then mm. they both evolved kind of in parallel over a long period of, of time. Mm. Stephen Mithin had a very interesting book called The Singing Neanderthals and mm. he argued that the predecessor to both language and music was kind of a grunting and groaning type communication, mm. which we still have parts of like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. Mm-hmm, 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 and so forth. <laughs> He figured that, that that sort of language kind of was the first form of systematic communication. Mm. And then at some point it split and you had music over here mm. and modern language over here, which both came out of that same root. Wow. Which is an Amazing. interesting kind of explanation for why music it sure is. is so deeply rooted in the, in our our psyche because it represents part of the kind of primordial communication oh, wow. that we don't use as much anymore because when, once you know symbolic communication and complex language like we have you don't need to use grunts and groans and funny little noises and gestures as much as you used to but that sort of explains why singing and dance mm-hmm. are so evocative for us that they're like going back to the primordial mode of communication mm. That's true. But I wonder, you know, some languages, I don't know if this has got any basis in fact or reality, but some languages use a lot of tone. Like the Vietnamese language has about five. I think Chinese has about four distinct tones um, uh, that go on top of it. French Chinese has four tones. Cantonese yeah. has significantly more. So. Yeah, that's right. And I'm wondering if that somehow that was like trying, um, combining singing with... Um, dialect or, or language so as to express an extra emotion or maybe that was no i, I don't think so yeah. i mean the, the the tones in chinese which i'm slowly learning the, the tones in chinese don't express emotion in fact 
They specifically do not use tone to express emotion as much as we do. Yeah, because that's right. It's pretty limited. When we ask a question, we're we'll like, well, what do you mean? We'll raise yes. the pitch at the end of the question. But they can't do that because raising a pitch changes the, the semantic content of, of, of the word. I'm just wondering whether that was the original intent. Um, whether, you know, language sort of formed out of both the arts and the... If you look at Chinese, the, the whole written form is very artistic. And um, it's not as um, distinct and logical as maybe the English alphabet. I mean, there's a, they, a different character for almost every word. Much, they would argue it's much more logical. Oh, I'm probably sure. Yeah, they would. Because each Chinese character has a long history to it and a whole story of why it right. is the way it is. Whereas yeah. English spelling appears largely irrational and no one can explain why the words are spelled the way they are. Mm. So, I, I, like the I'm word phonetic sure. is spelled with PH. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and we've never managed to make our alphabet phonetic any yes. more than we've managed to convert to the metric system in America. <laughs> Two in <laughs> French. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, back to AGI. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so, we, uh, we were talking about uh, AGI roadmap as one of the topics of a, dis a talk you're going to give in, in uh, Melbourne. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to talk about what what the roadmap is as you see it, um, and yeah, like um, how how you um, would like to see that implemented over the next five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty years. Sure. So the, the, there's a couple of different ways to talk about an AGI roadmap. What what one is a roadmap for a specific AGI project, like the OpenCog project. Mm -hmm. And the other is generically, what does the AGI field, the, the scope of AGI researchers, think is a reasonable roadmap to creating human level AGI? Um, we had a workshop organized by Itamar Errol and myself mm. in, I guess, October 2009, a while ago now, which was yeah. the AGI road mapping workshop held at the University of, of Tennessee. We had 12 people there, including some leading AGI researchers. And our goal was to see if we could get everyone to converge on some kind of single roadmap toward mm. AGI. And we didn't quite do that. There was a wild diversity of views on almost everything, but we we came up with some interesting conclusions and some interesting common ground, which we wrote up in a paper that, that should appear next year. And I'll, I'll, I'll review this in some talks I'll give this summer, both at the Singularity Summit Australia and the AGI 11 conference yeah. on artificial general intelligence. So, I mean, everyone seemed to agree that, you know, there's, there's going to be no single test for AGI because any single test, there's a risk that someone's going to make some hack together a very specialized program to do kind of 70% of the way. Hmm to do reasonable performance on, on that test. And really what you need to gauge progress towards AGI is a rich environment, and there could be several rich environments that could be valuable. I mean, Josh Hall wanted just to use the kitchen of an average house. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in, in preschool-type environments, both for robots and in, in virtual worlds. Some researchers were more interested in, say, the elementary school curriculum or the elementary school reading curriculum as something which is is fairly general as a variety of different tasks and a lot of data but you need some kind of environment which has a lot of data and a lot of different modes of, of interaction and then within that there's a large number I mean hundreds of different competencies that humans beings develop Oh, and another interesting environment that Sam Adams from IBM suggested the workshop was video games. Just a, yeah. an AGI that could play video games generically rather than being programmed for any 
particular game. And when you showed it a new game, it could learn how to, how to play. Mm, that's interesting. So, I mean, there are many environments you could look at. Within each of them, there's hundreds of competencies that human beings display, which cognitive scientists have, have gone over, and, and human developmental psychologists and, and so forth. So we kind of all agreed that some really rich environment is useful and that the AGI has got to be able to deal with the standard list of human cognitive competencies, which include things from being able to construct new structures out of parts to being able to communicate in language and tie language together with vision to, to mm -hmm. being able to infer things about social relationships to, to, to being able to do basic logical deduction. I mean, there's a large scope of different competencies that humans display. And one thing that's interesting is we kind of get better and better at many of these in an interlinked sort of way. So w w once we have a number of, of basic human cognitive competencies, it, it helps us to to gain others. They, they all sort of fit together in, in a rich network. But one of the other things we discovered is that the orders in which different AGI researchers want to proceed through the kind of laundry list of cognitive competencies, the orders are, are very different. So some researchers really want to start with language or with putting language and vision together. Hmm. Some want to start with reasoning. Some want to start with perception and movement hmm. and robotics. And everyone agrees that all the points need to be covered by the end. And everyone agrees that you need interaction with an AGI in some rich environment, whereas it has a variety of tasks to do and does kind of lifelong learning where it builds up knowledge over years and years. But the order in which different cognitive competencies need to be taught to the AGI or learned by the AGI, there's no way we could achieve agreement on that among even the 12 AGI guys at that little workshop, let alone the whole community. So mm. the paper we ended up writing based on that workshop was called Mapping the Landscape of AGI, uh -huh. Roadmap Toward AGI. And I think, I think that the AGI community can sort of agree on what the landscape looks like, to speak metaphorically. Mm. And then each of us is sort of charting our own our own road toward the common destination. I mean, if you visualize there as being a sort of mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And we're down by the foothills now because our AI programs aren't that smart. And the peak, for the point of view of this discussion, the peak is human level AGI. Although that is a limited point of view because really that peak is just a foothill on a yet higher peak whose top we can't even see because it's, it's lost in the clouds of, of superhuman intelligence. Mm. But we're in the foothills and there's a peak above us of human level AGI. And we kind of all agree on roughly what the mountain looks like. Mm -hmm. But we don't agree on what's the right path to take up the mountain. Uh -huh. But there might some be many. Some of us go this way first, some of us want to go that way first. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of setting out one path toward AGI, it's not the way the AGI field looks right now. It's a lot more diverse and, and, and heterogeneous. But we can agree on some things, like the need for a rich environment with rich interaction and the need to cover all the cognitive competencies that, that human beings do in, in some order or another. Now, then we have the roadmaps that you may associate with a particular AGI project like OpenCog, for example. And mm -hmm. there we can make a lot more commitments because we know what computer software we're building. We know what theoretical presuppositions it's based on. And we know what technologies we've decided to use at what stages in our, in our development process. Mm 